As you might recall, on our last Halloween episode, I dressed up as Jack Burton from Big Trouble in Little China. I still have the costume. Sometimes I sleep in the shirt and sometimes I mow the lawn in the shirt. I have a neighbor who is... A drinker. A drinker, yes. She's a nice woman. She's drunk a lot. And she's a bit of a scavenger, too. She finds things in garbage piles. She found something very interesting to give to Lorenzo in a garbage pile. Oh, cool. It's a little Jack Burton from Big Trouble in Little China. But Lorenzo's never seen Big Trouble in Little China. He thinks that this is a dad action figure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was given it. He's like, da da, da da. Yes! Unboxing. Simpsons. <laughs> That's right, it's time to open some mail and it's time to thank some donors. People go to welcome to the basement show.com and contribute. Generous folks, those. Here are their names Maurizio Patches, Chris, John, Kendall, Rebecca, Graham, Jenny, Susan, Robert, Christopher, Mark, Corey, Jonathan, Francesco, Danielle, Brian, Kelly, Illustrations, Austin, Bridget, Eden, Jared, Jason, Grace, Tabitha, Tito, Stephanie, Brandon, William, Shannon, Michelle, Kevin, Benjamin, Malcolm, Scott, Sarah, Dan, Kathleen, Betty, David, Christine, Marie, Michael, Mario. Thank you. Postcards. We've got some postcards. Oh, we've got postcards we're going to look at now. Dun, 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 dun. Postcards. This is from Sean in British Columbia. Dear Matt, Craig, and Tone, a short jaunt north of Victoria for lunch by the sea. Hope you all have a great autumn. Autumn. He's so classy. This is from Andrew who says, Dear Craig, Seattle, great American city or greatest American city? Uh, well, um, it's one of the greatest American cities. I haven't been to the mall yet. Scratching Vegas off my list later on this year. This is from Nintendo Lunchbox, who says, Kitty Cat, Kitty Tax, for your show, as if you don't have plenty. You guys are stellar. Kitty Cat. Don't worry. It landed on its feet. Landed on my feet. Brendan from Seattle says, What video stores do you visit for your movies? Do you stream any movies for the show, or is having a copy better for the experience? When I choose a movie, it's always from Four Star Video Cooperative in downtown Madison. And out in Seattle, keep Scarecrow alive. Matt from the Quad City says, I'm back from a trip to South Dakota. Hey. Have either of you seen Mount Rushmore or Crazy Horse? I have seen both. A number of times I've seen Mount Rushmore. I've only seen Crazy Horse once, I think. I've seen neither, and I really want to. And I really should. The Schmoopies from Phoenix say, Hi, Craig. The desert can be weird sometimes. And so can me. And so can the length of postcards. A tricky one, that. Yeah. And here's another strangely shaped postcard from Japan. Sarah writes, I have been living in Japan for the last four years. Next week, I'll be returning home to Alaska. Welcome home. She says that Alaska is misrepresented in movies because it's mostly shot in California. What laughable Hollywood misrepresentations have you enjoyed over the years? The one I like isn't really done anymore. It's done in old movies. Someone is driving in a convertible and there's rear projection. Mm -hmm. behind them, and they're just having a little chat. Yeah. Whereas if you're driving on the highway in an actual convertible, it's you're very Screaming loud. at each other. Yeah. yeah. And the hair is everywhere. Seeing that always kind of makes me smile. My favorite misrepresentation of a location is in the movie Halloween, where there are mountains visible in the flat plains of Illinois, and also where the high schools have the lockers on the outside of the school, like they don't in the Midwest because we have winter here. Brian from Hidden Valley Lake, California, writes us a letter. Typewritten letter, nice. Okay, Brian says, Horror Movie Month, October is coming up, and I'd like to suggest three movies which you might review. And then he suggests three non-horror movies as well, and I think I will keep those to myself, because hmm. I might just pick them. All right, well, good to know. Viewer questions. You ask them, we answer them. Lorna Del Hayes writes, How often do you guys hang out outside of the show? Not often enough, but recently we had a kind of a special night. We went out and saw a play. Yes. We went to the American Players Theater, which is a nationally renowned classics theater, and we saw the Shakespeare play Measure for Measure. It's very seldomly done, the play Measure for Measure. You can kind of tell why, because the ending of the play is a mess. It goes completely off the rail. Very messy, fussy plot, but it's got some beautiful moments in it. The first half of it is one of Shakespeare's best plays, and then the second half comes. 
it was very timely that they put it on just because of some of the themes. There's a scene where a man in power tries to force himself on a woman who is of lower status. And she threatens to expose him and he tells her, who would believe you? Yeah, that's uh, I totally forgot that part. Yeah. yeah. Everyone in the audience went... <gasps> <laughs> Michael Gray asks, What would you gentlemen say your all-time television series would be and why? Police Squad. Jesus. It's six episodes and it's perfect. Every single time I watch it, there's something new to be found. It has uh, the funniest things ever on TV. It's a tough question to answer. I will say that I did go back and watch the entirety of The Wire again. It's such a strong story, such strong characters, an army of characters God, that yeah. have all, they're all three-dimensional characters, and they're all brilliantly portrayed, and it's just a top-notch show. And of those thousands of characters, there are a good two dozen that I find myself really caring about. You know, oh, absolutely. Omar and Snoop and Prez... The transformation of Prez. Oh my god, he's my favorite character on the show because of that. He yeah. is so despicable in the first episode. And then he's so heartbreaking. He, and then he it. turns around yeah. to be this hero. And then you learn that he's not a bad person, he just has the wrong job. Yeah. He's a terrible cop. <laughs> and that makes him a terrible person. Yeah. I have one more question. Oh, it's yeah. from Michael Lafferty. Would you rather watch a comedy movie starring Sylvester Stallone that was scored by Eddie Money... Or a comedy movie starring Eddie Money that was scored by Sylvester Stallone? I'm not going to answer this question. Because anybody who knows me knows what my answer would be. Starring Eddie Money? i got to solve this mystery! (laughs) (laughs) Can't figure out this keyboard. (laughs) There we go. I believe that's from Empathy Studios. In Front Royal, Virginia. And it seems to be stuff. Yeah. Arabian Nights. Ooh. With Doug Ray Scott in it. The man who could have been Wolverine. Is that a new movie or an old Alan movie? Alan Bates, John Leguizamo. Oh, it's a miniseries. Jim Henson, Creature Studios in it. Yeah. What else? Don Bluth's Banjo the Woodpile Cat. Haven't heard of that one, <laughs> Donnie. This is from Alyssa, actually. And uh, she just returned from performing in Prague, Czech Republic. She got us some goodies there. For me, she has... Postcards. Let's just take a quick look at these. Tall, skinny ladies. You couldn't get laundry detergent, but you could get your brain washed. And then an old Czechoslovakian stamp. For Matt, I bought you some buttons from the Museum of Communism. She's trying to win you over. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I like old images of scary bears and creatures. And for Tona... I got you a magnet from the Mucha Museum. Hey, we like magnets. There's still room on our fridge. Yes. Here you go, Tona. Oh, thank you. Let me see. Oh, that's gorgeous. Arabian Nights miniseries is uh, her favorite miniseries of all time. Take that, the Thornbirds. It's at this point in the show where we recommend an episode from our back catalog, something for you to check out uh, if you haven't seen it or rewatch it. For those of you who are fans of Miami Connection, you may or may not know that we watched another kung fu movie before that, starring none other than Bruce Lee. And that was episode 82, Way of the Dragon. I kind of thought that that would be more popular with our audience, but it was just so-so. You should check it out, if only to hear Craig do his impersonation of the sound of nunchucks. (laughs) I have uncovered another row on the movie bucket list. And once again, I'm going to quiz you, see if you can figure out the iconic image that represents these movies. These are minimalist posters of famous movies. 2001 A Space Odyssey. It's just the computer red eye. That is correct. Yep. Groundhog Day. Um, Groundhog? Good guess. It is an alarm clock with 6 a.m. on it. I was thinking of the alarm clock. I was thinking that. I should have said that. Here's one that we watched on our show, The Notebook. I'll give you a hint. It's not a notebook. Okay. There's the house. There's the Ferris wheel. Ferris wheel is correct. Oh, it is Ferris wheel. Jurassic Park. Glass of water with ripples on it. An Which... insect in amber. Oh. There you go. There is the new line of the movie bucket list. I see a movie that hasn't been scratched off there. You want to know what it is? I saw what it is. I've never seen it. Well, I have. Let's just say that I've put it in the corner. There is no forward report this week. It will return next time, and so let's open the mail. Silva Sprocket. 
on Haight Street in San Francisco. Whoa, nice. Big box, very light. Larry and His Flash. All That We Know is the name of the album. Larry and His Flash. I've never heard of this band. Is there a note? There's a Larry and His Flash what? sticker. Wait, that's his flask. Oh, and his flask? Well, that's what I... it said on the sticker. All right, well, this was possibly sent to us by Larry and His Flask. Yes. Here is a silver sprocket decal. This big box is from McNeil in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. In my office, McNeil. Gun and badge on the desk. You're off the case. Inside this box is a record shape box. Oh boy. <laughs> this is something for me. Oh man. Ian. This isn't for me. Been a huge fan of Welcome to the Basement. Discovered us during his college years. Your show is special and perfectly executed. Thank you for putting on a show that makes me feel good every time I watch. Oh, that's really nice. Sent gifts for both of you. Matt, your gift will accompany Craig's gift to you when you watched Saturday Night Fever. For Craig, I got you a gift that will go nicely with your Ghostbusters lapel pin. It's another Ghostbusters lapel pin. I thought this was for me because I don't have one. <laughs> oh, this is a Ghostbusters 2 lapel pin, Matt. Oh. See, well, then it makes that. perfect sense. If there's something strange in your neighborhood, who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. It is the vinyl movie soundtrack to Staying Alive. <laughs> the sequel to Saturday Night Fever, which is supposed to be not good at all. I've seen it. Once. Oh, and also a song by Frank Stallone. Huh. He could help Sylvester score that movie. <laughs> we had a good time here on Unboxing. We opened mail. We read things. We answered questions. That's what we do here, man. And you can watch the new episode of Welcome to the Basement this coming Friday. And now, immediately, you can watch this.